Hey there everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. In this episode, we are going to talk about two-dimensional dynamic programming or 2DDP. We have already covered one-dimensional dynamic programming and if you haven't watched that, you can find the link in the description. One-dimensional dynamic programming is also a prerequisite for this video. So there's nothing different in two-dimensional dynamic programming. You just have to form the recurrence relation as we were doing in 1DDP, then convert it into memoization and then convert it into tabulation. So in this video, we are directly going to solve the question stone game 5. So first we will solve this question using a normal recursive solution. Then we will see that there's some recomputation going on. So then we will apply memoization. So now let's move forward and solve the question. First of all, let us try to read the problem description and try to understand the problem. So there are several stones arranged in a row and each stone has an associated value with it which is an integer value. In each round of the game, Alice divides the row into two non-empty rows, the left row and the right row. Then Bob calculates the value of each row which is the sum of all the stones in the row. Bob throws away the row which has the maximum value. So from the left and right, whichever is having the maximum sum, Bob will throw that away and Alice's score will increase by the value of the remaining rows. If the value of the two rows are equal, then Bob lets Alice decide that which one to throw. The next round start with the remaining rows. So the game ends if there is only one stone remaining and initially uh, Alice is having zero as the score. We have to maximize the score that Alice can obtain. Now let us try to see the very first example. We are having six stones and in the first round Alice divides it as 6 to 3 and 4 5 5. So this, uh, these are the distribution. Now we can see that the summation for the left part is 9 plus 2 which is 11 and this one is 14. So the right part is having summation as 14. So Bob is going to throw this part and the remaining part will be 6 comma 2 comma 3 now the summation for this is 11 so 11 is uh, going to be added in Alice's score and now 6 to 3 will be passed to the next round in the next round now Alice divide Alice is going to divide this as 6 and 2 comma 3 so this is the distribution for the next round and in this case the summation for the left part is more than the summation for the right part the summation for the left part is 6 and summation for the right part is 5. Now Bob is going to throw the left part and 5 is going to be added to Alice's score. Now the total score is 16. Now 2 comma 3 will be taken to the third round. In the third round there is only one possibility to divide it as 2 and 3. Because we will have to divide it as non-empty arrays. So this remains the only possibility. In this case, the summation for the right part is 3 and the summation for the left part is 2. Bob is going to throw 3 because uh, Bob is going to throw the right part because the summation for this is more than the left part. And 2 is going to be added into Alice's score. So the total score is 18. So this is the optimal solution in this case. Now let us try to see through this, uh, the same example in the form of recursion. Initially, the summation for the entire array is 25 in this case. Now, if you want to distribute it, the first distribution could be as 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. Another distribution could be 6, 2 in the left part and 3, 4, 5, 5 in the right part. Then 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. 6 to 3 4 5 5 6 to 3 4 5 and 5 so these are the distributions now uh, the summation for the left part in this case is 6 here it is 19 8 17 for the left part 11 14 10 15 20 and 5 so these are the distribution and these are the uh, respective summations now if we are uh, let me name them first 
so this is my first distribution this is my second distribution third fourth and fifth initially I'm having six number of elements so I will be having total five possible distributions so if you want to go with the first distribution the, in the first distribution the right part will be thrown away so this part is redundant so six will be taken into consideration in the next round similarly if you want to go with the second distribution again the right part will be thrown away in this case also the right part will be thrown away but in this case the left part will be thrown away and we will have to pass the right part which is 5 comma 5 in this case also the left part is going to be thrown away and 5 will be passed on in this case 6 to 3 will be passed on to the next recursive call in this case 6 comma 2 will be passed on now as we saw in the example we will only obtain optimal solution if we go with 6 to 3 as the distribution of course but we will have to explore each of these possibilities and then we will have to maximize keep maximize the answer for whichever possibility is maximum we will have to return that now if we are distributing this again we will be having uh, certain possibilities those possibilities are 6 2 3 then 6 2 and 3 now we see that 6 2 is appearing again and 6 2 here is appearing again so we already have the answer for 6 2 why to calculate it again so that is why we are going to store uh, store the answer for a certain configuration and then we can simply return it as it is already stored that is why we will optimize this solution this recursive solution uh, into a dynamic programming solution now let us try to see the same through a code let us say that we are given the start and 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 of course the vector stones if start is greater than end then simply return zero else I will first of all I will find the summation to the total summation of this of this part of the array which is from start to end for int i equal to start i is more than equal to end so this is the total summation now we are going to distribute it into n minus 1 possibilities so for that so from the from the start till the i this will be my left part and from i plus 1 till end it's uh, it's going to be my right part so So this is the left part initially the summation in the left part is zero now as soon as i come to the very first element i'm going to increase the summation of the left part so this will be added to the left part and initially the right part was having the summation as the entire summation of course and now we are going to reduce it by v of i so the sum denotes the summation of the right part and L denotes the summation of the left part. If the summation of the left part is, is smaller than the summation of the right part, then we are having possibility. Okay, first of all, let me keep a uh, answer. Initially, my answer is minimum, that is zero. Now I'm going to optimize my answer. Answer will be maximum of answer, comma, L as this is the smaller one among those among the left and the right so uh, let me change this sum as r so that we can think it as the summation of the right part 
so as the summation of the left part is less l will be added to the answer and in the further in the further rounds we are going to pass from i plus 1 to end if it is equal in this case Alice can decide among any of these so answer will be maximum of answer comma L plus maximum of two options the two options are either to take the left part if we take the left part then we will have to pass I plus 1 to end V if we take the right part we will have to pass from uh, from start till I okay if we are going to take the left part then we will have to pass from start till I if we are going to take the right part then from I plus 1 till end and in this case we took the left part so from start till I yeah so this is it now the last case when r is smaller than l in this case we will have to take the right part maximum of answer comma r plus r plus help of i plus 1 till end and then return the answer now we will have to call this helper function from our main function and we can return help of 0 comma v dot size minus 1 and v It is not giving us correct answer let me see why this is the summation one thing I could see is r minus equal to yeah so now we are getting correct answer but this solution is going to give us time limit exceeded let us try to submit this As we said we are going to get TLE so this TLE could be tackled with the memoization that we discussed because there will be repetition as 6 to here and 6 to here so there will be this repetition and to avoid recomputing uh, re all those we can have a DP array of size 501 and 501 uh, we can see the constraints it is giving uh, the length as 500 so that is why we took the 2d dp the 2d dp is taken because we have two variables which denotes a particular state of dp so start and end are those two variables which are going to denote the state we can mem set this and if dp of start comma and if it is already calculated uh, the value won't be minus 1 then we can simply return dp of start comma and else we can store this while returning the answer let us try to run this now mm. yes we are getting correct answer let us try to submit it got accepted now let us talk about the space complexity we can see that the space uh, used here is 
of 501 by 501 if we consider this n the space is going to be n square but in each of this recursive call we are again traversing the entire array that is from the start till end which further increase increases the time complexity by big of n so the total time complexity would become big of n cube in this case as the constraints are not that high this solution is getting accepted so this is it for the solution if you like the video please subscribe to the channel thank you